Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Often, as children grow and learn lessons from those around them, there are moments of silence when you can almost smell their mental gears grinding. They are taking in information. They're hopefully whirling it together with what they have already learned. And they're questioning everything. I mean, everything. And while that can be frustrating, this process is necessary for their development. This is why consistency. Consistency in parenting and the village people, that's all of us, is critical. This is why answering the questions of children, even when we're stressed out in a way that they can understand, is so very important. This is also why there's an actual phrase for this description. Their wheels are turning, right? You can almost see the light bulb over their heads pop on. And when those light bulbs of understanding go off, it's fantastic. What a joy. It's a thrill among all of the other stuff the teachers have to do, unfortunately. That's what their heartbeat is for. That moment when that light bulb goes off and the kid gets it. There are also times when, due to urgency and necessary prioritization or timing, or details, or things designed to keep our children as innocent as possible for as long as possible, we must, as adults, insist on our own willfulness without explanation. That's when we hear, because I said so. Just do what I said. I don't have time to explain, but I'm your dad, your mom, your grandmother, your grandfather, and you will listen to me. Well, all righty then. The battle of wills between parent and child or adult and child ensues, and a delightful time is had by all, right? The snoots come out. The hands fold over the chest. There might be yelling or screaming or crying or tantrum. There is a determination that an adult authority will be overtaken by the willfulness of the toddler or the teenager or maybe even another adult. There are the times that test us, that try our patience. And indeed, those are the times when, as the LBW marriage service states in a prayer, the gift of family can become a burden. You remember that prayer? The gift of family can become a burden. Yikes. And then after that, there's the big but God, but God and his wisdom, right? There is a time for wheels to turn, and there is a time for wills to bend to other wills. And as far back as Genesis chapter 3, humans have had regular issues with this concept. So there's this huge history that includes us, as well as Jesus' response to his own disciples in today's text. Jesus' point is to continue to pray and to not lose heart regardless the outcomes we see and experience. This is the perfect combination of wheel turning and bending our wills to God's. Now today's parable includes two major characters, the judge and the widow. The judge and the widow. Now this judge was not Jewish. Jewish disputes were a matter for Jewish elders, not public courts. So if the dispute remained unsettled, there would still not be a judge. There would be a panel of three judges, one chosen by the plaintiff, one chosen by the defendant, and one independently appointed, a paid magistrate chosen by Herod or the Romans. So unless a plaintiff had money or community influence enough to bribe his way into a verdict, there was no hope of ever getting the case settled, often. These judging teams were so well known for their tactics and their strategies that they actually had two names. The official name was Diana Gezeroth, that's important, the Roth part, Judges of Punishments and Prohibitions, and the unofficial name was 
Diana Jezaloth with an L. Robber judges. Robber judges. This is where Jesus' own description of a judge who neither feared God nor respected man comes in. That's where that is. So the widow symbolizes the poor and the defenseless people. She would have no resources to earn favors from anybody. She would never really see justice done. The only weapon in her wheelhouse was persistence. Yank in the chain. The judge is exhausted by this woman. She will not give it a rest. She just keeps on yanking his chain until he listens to her to get her to shut up. If you're a parent, you might have some understanding. If you're a caregiver of any kind, you might have some understanding. If you are passionate or convicted about a particular cause, you might have some understanding. Even James Taylor got it when he wrote the lyrics to shower the people you love with love. Because one of the lyrics in here, if you remember, is, I think it's true what they say about the squeaky wheel always getting the grease. The squeaky wheel and the grease, remember that? So prayer is not really about personal power. It's about having a real relationship with God through prayer that makes us even more aware of God's already existing power. So today, we have this parable about a squeaky-wheeled widow that wears out a judge into dealing with her. This is not a reason to assume that we will get whatever we ask God for. Jeannie rubbed the lamp. I'm going to get it because he said whatever I ask for, he's going to give me. Well, that'd be fine if we were the only people on earth, but we're not. And sometimes we ask for things when we have one view, not knowing the end result of our request, may actually be harmful in some way to ourselves or someone else. And that's why we plead with God and talk with God and ask that His will be done because He knows it all when we don't. And we know that God is omnipotent. Our own squeaky wheels may not achieve what we want. We yank all day long. And that's also why we pray this specifically, and we're going to do it today, and we always do, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. One of the two most dangerous statements in that prayer, the other one being forgiveness, as we've been forgiven. Our will and God's will do not always match. So Jesus tells us today in Luke that we must not be discouraged in prayer. But he also expects us to be persistent about it, just like squeaky wheeled widow woman. Now let's read the end of this parable again. The Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge says. That's the law version. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? In other words, those who have no relationship with God may make a very quick decision based on a squeaky wheel. But when Jesus returns to take us all home, Jesus expects the faithful to have been having regular conversations with him whether their squeaky wheel prayers have been answered on their time clock or not. Jesus' question is, will I find faithful folks when I come back to save them? Or will I find folks who have given in to the worldly way of appeasing the loudest complainers? Will my people be listening to those who try to shut me out? Or will they be listening to me? Now from our second lesson, those itching ears, our willful wheels? Will those be allowed to create a divide between us and our Creator and salvation? Or will we be ready, both in season and out of season, to preach God's Word, 
to reprove, to correct, to rebuke, to exhort, to train in righteousness? Will we turn away from the truth of God and toward myths, as Scripture calls it, or will we be sober-minded and endure the suffering that comes alongside growing and maturing in the faith to which we are called? Now, the faithful never grow weary of conversation with God, and it takes a variety of forms. Sometimes it's pure gratitude. Sometimes it's, Lord, why? And everything in between. But the faithful never grow weary of conversations with God, no matter the outcomes. The faithful understand that they are not God, <laughs> and they bind themselves to God's will above their own, no matter what. Our prayer, straight from Jesus' model of the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer, is for God's will to reign in our hearts, our wheels, and our wills. Just like Jacob in our Genesis text, we are to say to God, I will not let you go unless you bless me. We just don't have the power to always understand the blessings he's providing. At least not at the time. At least not right away. We must trust in faith that he gives us that his holy heart's desire is to keep on, keep on, keep on blessing us. And he does. Only Almighty God, whose depth of love for us we can't even begin to understand, would ever see our wheels spinning away from his desires for us, which we do all the time, and yet will himself to suffer for us. To lay it down. Only our Creator, the one that created every single one of us, would see our disobedience to him as an opportunity to draw us to his will even tighter. Only Jesus would literally lay down his life and cleanse us from sin and rise with the power to save us all. Only the Holy Spirit would enter into ordinary bread and wine and create a way for us to carry Jesus' body and blood within us out there as we deal with worldly issues every single day. As you receive Jesus' body and blood today, along with all of his forgiveness and all of his love and all of what he told us in his word, he is wrapping us up in with persistence. Remember that he willed that holy mystery to those who believe in him. It is a gift of grace, and it is a gift of mercy. And one benefit of that gift is the reassurance that binding ourselves to Jesus, binding ourselves, will keep our wheels spinning in holier ways and will help us to submit to God's will above our own. God's wheels have been turning since time began, and God's will will be done for his children. And for that, we give thanks to God. Amen.